What's going on, fam? Welcome to another episode of the Thrive Forever Fit Show. I'm your host, Jay Nixon. And just in case you're a first time listener, this show is all about disruption, inspiration, and transformation. I want to disrupt the way you currently think. I want to inspire you to think differently, bigger, bolder, better. And I want to give you the tools you need and the resources you need to transform into that person, into that life that you so deserve and desire to live. Today, we have got Ashley back for her update show, 60 Pounds in Six Months. Today, we're going to talk about Las Vegas. We're going to talk about a lot of stuff today. Today's going to be a fun, fun show. Tune in. Love you. Glad you're here. Let's get ready to meet Ashley again. Ashley, what's going on, buddy? Not much. You've had, you've had a big month. I have. Awesome. We're going to talk about all of the cool things. I got a bunch of questions. You don't even know what I'm going to ask. So just for you guys that are listening, um, Ashley comes on once a month. We're on a six-month journey. This is month five. And how many pounds are you down today? Oh, gosh. Um, okay. We can ballpark I'm, it. I mean, what I we think, got? Well, I didn't weigh. I took a recent trip that we're going to talk about, and I haven't weighed after that. So I think I'm just right around 41, but I don't know my loss for this last year. That's okay. Yeah. Four. So 41 ish pounds down. Um, how long, what total, what's total weight loss on, on this little bit? I think I'm 54. Okay. So 50 plus. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. 50 plus that's, I mean, listen, those are both, um, you know, huge milestones. Awesome. Most people struggle to lose 40 to 50 pounds their entire life. And so that is a, you know, a huge accomplishment on your part that you've been able to do that. Let's jump right in. So what has been the most challenging part of this month? Because you've had, I think this is going to be a really good show because you've gone to Vegas, you've had a lot of, you know, I'll, we'll use the word chaos, right? So I'm, I want you to talk about how you've been able to manage consistency during chaos. And we're going to use all the things. So let's, let's talk about Vegas. How was that? Vegas was amazing. Yeah. Um, there about six days to mm-hmm. celebrate one of my besties nuptials. And so it was awesome. I love you look, Vegas. You look great in your dress. I mean, we'll, we, we can, can we, can we post the, those photos, the before and after the photo? The, yeah. The, I put, I put it on my Instagram. So I got brave okay. enough to do that. So yes, All you right. can. So the, just what I'm talking about guys is so this wedding had been postponed. It was supposed to happen. What last year? Last April. Okay. Mm-hmm. Last April. And so Ashley has a picture in, in her bridesmaid's dress uh, from like last April-ish and then the recent wedding that happened a year later and the, the transformation is undoubtable. I mean, it's phenomenal. And you actually had to have the dress altered. Um, like re- remade. Yeah, yeah. It, was a, it was a 20 and I'm a 12 right now. So she basically remade it. She had to raise the waist. I mean, it yeah. was hilarious. It, it was looked like, like a, a new, different new dress. dress. Oh, totally. <laughs> yeah. So was. from a 20 to a 12, I mean, that's pretty radical right there. And that's pretty awesome. I and mean, that's got to feel good. Oh, it felt so good. I think that um, last alteration was my final like sink in of how much I've lost so far. Yeah. Because I've changed sizes, but it was just like putting that all together. Like I didn't even know who was in the mirror. I'm like, right. who is that girl? You know, so Um, It was a pretty cool thing for sure. Love it. So let's pause off on that. So Vegas, and let's just talk about the the complexities of Vegas as it is. Vegas (laughs) by itself, right? Like Vegas can just, will just get you because it's the land of excess, right? It's 24 hour food, it's 24 hour booze, it's 24 hour minimal sleep. It's not normal routine. There's food everywhere. There's, I mean, and then you, and then double that down with a wedding. Like I love a good wedding. Weddings are usually fun. It's a hell of a party. So you yeah. had, you had Vegas plus wedding plus awesomeness. How was it going into that, knowing that the journey you're on? And then, and you guys, if you've been listening to this show at all, you know, one of my things, and I say this 24, seven, 365 is the whole idea of like discipline equals freedom, right? Like be disciplined enough so that when the opportunity presents itself, that something that you want to do, something you want to consume, some you want to have, you want to party your ass off. You've, you've got, you've developed enough freedom. You've earned enough freedom to do that. So what was it like before you went to Vegas? Let's talk about like the, the preparation part and then during and now after. I felt pretty confident going into Vegas. You know, I had done Colorado Mm -hmm. pretty easily, except for this is the most opposite trip possible. Let's be honest, I mean, Colorado, (laughs) I mean, Colorado loves you, but you ain't Vegas, baby. Yeah, so different. And we had our own Airbnb and I cooked every meal, but um, I was feeling pretty confident. I had had decided in December 
that I didn't want to drink because for me, it's like a slippery slope of excess. And so I was pretty confident that that was going to be the case, but it was like a little bit of like a cracked door that like, if the moment presented itself and I really wanted to, I would drink. So we can yeah. obviously touch on that. Cool. Um, food, food wise, it wasn't super hard. I mean, I could order stuff that would fit my needs. And then she had bomb diggity food. It was like a very bougie wedding. Everything was high end. And so I definitely enjoyed that. So I ate more calories and I normally do more carbs than I normally do. But like, for me, the food didn't feel like a big stumbling block, but the, yeah. the booze, the booze got me. The booze hey, got hey. me. All right. Let's, yeah. talk about food. let's talk about food first. So for those of you guys listening, I want this to be a, a lesson for you guys too. And not just a lesson, but just like a resource. So the, I go to Vegas all the time. You pr probably too much, about once a month. Um, <laughs> And I have zero problems eating healthy there. I mean, literally, Vegas is the land of every food you could ever want, which means you can get the best quality, yes. deliciousness of anything. And if you don't want to stray and you don't want to go off the rails, you don't have to. But if you do, then there's beautiful options for that as well. So Vegas is one of those places where I tell people, if you go to Vegas once a year and there's a restaurant you want to go to or a wedding like you went to, of course you should eat more calories than you're used to. Of course you should try that. Of course you should have the bites of dessert and the this and the that's and the, and the extra cocktail here and there. And we're gonna to touch on the cocktails in a second. So don't beat yourself up, but just have the discipline before you go so that when you do that, it doesn't completely derail your entire progress. So let's talk about the cocktails, right? Well, before the cocktails, I did, I worked out while I was there. She did. So we, I mean, we took a couple of Peloton rides together. Uh -huh. um, you trained every day, which I knew you would. I mean, that's not your thing. Like you're always going to work out. So that's, I mean, I wasn't ever even concerned. about. It was that. harder though. It, it was definitely harder. It, it helped that they had a Peloton. It was yeah. weird. Cause I had to wear a mask the whole time when I worked out and just some stuff I'm not used to. Right. Um, you know, Mr. Whoever served us in the, the gym constantly standing there with towels and drinks and whatever, but it, it was, it was good for me to have something that was habitual because nothing else was, but right. okay. We can move on to cocktails. Let's do it. So you so, hey, hold, so December, I'm not gonna drink, right? We roll around. What was it? We were we're in April. So what happened at the what happened? Because you even told me you were in Vegas and you and I chatted and you you posted something about this little champagne bell. And I said, ring the bell, have some fun. You, said no. you <laughs> no. said no, no, I'm not gonna drink. And I chuckled. <laughs> I was like, that's cute. Okay. <laughs> that was day so, that was day one. Yeah, so what uh, happened? Well, so I, I, we, we landed on Wednesday and then Friday morning, we were sitting at a beautiful um, bridal brunch, like four seasons patio, perfect weather. And uh, breakfast was delicious. And people are just flying through mimosas, like oh, yeah. fresh, fresh green orange juice. Da, da, da. And I just like had this moment that like felt kind of white knuckly. So I was like, hell is bring a mimosa, you know? Yeah. And it did kind of open the floodgates. I mean, I wasn't like sloppy drunk the entire time by any means, but like Everywhere we went had the best cocktails. We yeah. went to the new Circa. I don't, did you, have yeah. you got a Circa yet? Yeah, I've been there. Yeah, so it was just like the best cocktails. And so I enjoyed that. And then I started feeling kind of crummy because of it. I mean, for obvious reasons. Hold on, and crummy, so, crummy mentally or crummy physically or both? No, physically. Cause okay. mentally I was still like one of the lightest drinkers for yeah. sure. <laughs> okay. Um, no, physically my body's like, we don't enjoy this. Like inflammation, right. headaches, yeah. you know, all that stuff. Um, and the wedding of course was like kind of an all day situation, but I didn't even start drinking until the evening of the, of the wedding. And that was conscious choice, but, um, we had a really windy day on Sunday. So we decided not to fly out on Sunday, but to fly out on Monday. And so we went, <laughs> we went down to a pool party, rented all these cabanas, you know, I'm talking, this was like, everything was covered. It was awesome. And before I knew it, I had a 32 ounce cocktail in my hand. Sweet. Who needs that? No one needs that. Um, yeah, it's Vegas. But Everything's it was, big. Uh, it's like $40. Um, and it was so delicious. And we had fun and we were playing drinking games and stuff like that. But it was after that where I'm like, mama needs to like detox. It was like mm -hmm. water, BCAs, like everything. And honestly, I felt the effects. So that was Sunday, probably pretty strong until Wednesday. Wow. Yeah. 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 In toxin, inflammation. Right? Yeah, yeah. It's a toxin. I mean, it is, you know, it is what it is. And we have to choose you know, to have those cocktails and, and know that those ramifications are going to come. Okay, listen, I'm, you know, as, as the guy who's, I mean, I, I don't like the word, as the guy who's in charge of helping you get to where it is you want to get, I'm totally cool with all of that. Like, I'm glad you went and you had a blast. 
And you can't look back on that wedding and say, I didn't go all in, right? You no, no, yeah. I enjoyed myself. I didn't feel, I never felt like I was like missing out on anything because I was Good. in this particular journey. And I was just telling my accountability partner right before we talked that I know I've changed completely because we came home and it was a no brainer. Yeah. Like I didn't slip back into, well, I've already screwed up. So, That's what I was gonna you know, ask. Good. yeah, no, it didn't trail into the week at all. It was just sort of like, here I am, I'm back to my habits. And, you know, does it feel good to work out and stuff when you're like inflamed and you can barely bend your fingers and you have heart, I literally had heartburn, like yeah. throat down, like I burnt my esophagus, yeah. <laughs> you know? So, I mean, I, I think the lesson I took away from that is alcohol may not be like a, a part of my life that much, even when this challenge quote unquote is done. And I think that's okay too. You know, a drink here or there is fine. Yeah. You know, last summer we put in a pool and mama likes to drink all weekend at the pool. Cause Hey, you know, and I just don't think that'll be my jam this year. And that's okay. We're allowed to change. We're allowed to have these epiphanal moments. And if it lasts a month, if it lasts six months, if it lasts a year, who cares? Right. And then maybe the next yeah. time you're in Vegas, I mean, listen, I'll be honest with you guys, ladies, if you invite me to your bridal shower, <laughs> Daddy's drinking the champagne. I mean, we're going all in. You can keep your OJ, you can keep your OJ, but I'm gonna go to work. And if you're yeah. there, we're gonna have some fun. So it's those times whenever you need to have those fun times because when, then when you come home, it's like you almost don't even want any of that nonsense. It's like you no. like like are like no thank you. Don't even bring anything like that around me. I want to be so freaking healthy. So you can actually use times like that as a nice little reset. Um, to get you back into that baseline. And I, I love the fact, I was going to ask you, how was it coming home? And so you just jump right back in the saddle and, and probably are even like even more buttoned up than you were, even more disciplined. Yeah, for the most part, um, coming home with my my kiddos kind of gave us a hazing when we came back home. I've got five kiddos that are just a lot. And so there were, I was telling, I was telling my accountability partner, there were like, like, like yesterday, like I had a piece of salmon, but I was like too lazy to make asparagus, even though asparagus is awesome, tons of nutrients, whatever. So I've had a few like lazy moments like that this week. So I'm going to really like straighten that up. And that just has to do with a lot of things. I haven't been sleeping and whatever, yeah. but um, I- The I awareness home, around that is gorgeous, right? I love the fact that you're aware of that. So that's a great thing. Like we don't, yeah. I think oftentimes we beat our, I mean, you're not like this. I mean, you're pretty self-aware and all those things and you and I talk so much. But most people will be like, beat themselves up. Well, I, you know, I didn't have the asparagus. I know I should, I mean, it's asparagus guys. Let's run. Yeah. Let's chill, let's chill out and let's be cool. Right. Yeah. But I'm pretty sure like, I know I can, I know I can button up of course. more. Yeah. Of course. Absolutely. We all, we all can. And we all, you know, we all probably should from time to time. But I, like I said, I just want to reiterate the fact that if you're listening to this and you're on, hopefully you're not on a diet because that's going to fail you. And I don't want to ever see anybody fail. If you're on a lifestyle journey like we teach and coach in the Thrive Forever Fit program, I want you to go to those places and spaces and those special events. And I want you to have as much fun as humanly possible. But I also want you to do what Ashley did and come home and like get back into the game. And that, so, so many people, and, and you may have done this in the past, like have had those benders and then you come home yeah. and it's like, it's just an excuse to like stay kind of on a screwed up path. So I love the fact that you didn't do that. I always used to do that. This is the first Colorado and this trip are the first two trips I've been like, well, that was what it was and it was lovely and let's get back. You know, normally you're right. It was like an excuse just to keep going and going. So what, what do you think the shift in that was? I mean, obviously it was a mindset shift, but like, can you like dive into that a little bit? I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I think I've just really confronted my excuses, you know, and yeah and using the week or six days or whatever of not doing my normal patterns and indulging and stuff like that before would just be an excuse. I've already screwed up. Let's just, you know, this isn't going to matter at this point. Let's just keep going. But I've confronted those excuses and they're just that they're, they're a derailment. It's a story I've told myself that has no truth to it. So I yeah. think like I have spent all this time on the mindset work that like, it wasn't hard to come home and go back to my habits. It was actually just who I am. So it's, it's weird, but I love great. It. Yeah, something I think about is like, you know, you made a decision, right? This, you made a decision that like, I'm good, I'm doing this. Mm -hmm. Many of us have made those decisions time and time and time before. And so what I, you know, words, decisions, they lose their power when they're not coupled with action. And yeah. so I think that's the differentiator for you is you made a declaration and a decision 
and you've backed that up with the actions necessary to give those words the power that they really deserve in your life. And I think that's a major differentiator as well. And it's also, it's like, you know, you're part of a team, right? Like you've got me, you've got the group, you've got Jill, you've got, you know, you're, you're fortified with a, I mean, this is like a full blown squad of people who've got your back, right? And that makes a huge difference. Oh, it's so, it's so true. Um, it's so true. And even like, you know, four days, I think four days I was off the page and I was just so disconnected and like, I, I miss the encouragement. I miss the honesty. I miss all of that stuff. So yeah. you're right. This is, this is such a group effort for sure. And, and I think I want, I wanted to say that because I think a lot of people think, cause you mentioned the word white knuckle earlier. Mm -hmm. um, and I think a lot of people white knuckle their, their diets or their weight loss journeys or the things like that. And it's because they're doing it by themselves. And I mean, holy shit guys, that's a lot of, there's a lot of things that go on in life that if you try to just consistently managed by yourself. I don't like the word failure, but you're going to lose some of those battles because life's a team sport. Like we're not meant to go through this thing by ourselves. And it doesn't matter the magnitude of your journey. It's like, you know, Ashley and I talk about a lot of things that have zero to do on the surface with weight loss, but they always, they could be drilled down into how successful she's going to be with this, with this new lifestyle transformation that she's on. And you need people in your life that aren't your husband or wife or sister or brother or mom or dad that you can have these weird conversations with um, because it's safe, right? Like she, Ashley knows that she can tell me anything, trust me with any question, just show up and throw up and I'll be like, okay, cool. Now let's figure out yeah. how to deal with it. And it's never going to get any further than me and her. And there's a safety in that. And that safety creates, that trust and safety creates a place where I don't think you even have to worry about failing, right? Because you know, like, okay, I'm about, you know, if I did do something stupid, I don't have to keep it to myself. I can tell Jay, we'll work through it. We'll figure it mm -hmm. out. and We'll just figure out a plan of action to get over it. So I'm proud of you for embracing that because I think so many people, and you, listen, actually I've been working together for a long time and you at first struggle with a little bit of vulnerability. And I don't even know if you're aware of this now, but like your level of vulnerability and I mean, you're super honest. So I'm going to say honesty, but honesty, to like, a, you know, you'll just tell me anything has gotten so much better. And I think that's part of your success as well. Yeah, that is, I, I know that I'm getting better at it because I'm uncomfortable all the time. Yeah. Whereas it's safe for me to not share and just keep my walls up, but that's not where any of the magic happens. And yeah. the, the, I really have been wanting to like publicly talk about um, how important the declaration piece is because it is easy to say, okay, I'm going to do this. And maybe you're you know, a couple of your friends know and stuff like that. And, and then that's easy and safe, you know, but if you put it out there that this is what I'm doing, like you have a whole other level of accountability. And, um, this is going to sound backwards, but like at the beginning, I used to say, well, I just don't want to let you down, you know, or yeah. I tell you, I'm going to, I'm going to do X, Y, Z when I go to this party and I, and I won't fall off. because I don't want to let you down. Well, you'd be like, it has nothing to do with me. It has yeah. everything to do with letting yourself down. So like I went from the beginning of this journey being this declaration, like, I didn't want to be embarrassed. I wanted to hold to my word to like, now I just don't want to let myself down. Like I want to yeah. fi finish strong, even though there's no finish line, I'm going to keep going. And I just want to, I just want to like do this well. And I think that so many people are scared to make a declaration. And I'm not saying people need to get on a podcast or, you yeah. know, throw their life out there on YouTube. But I think people are afraid to be like, this is what I know I need to do. And I'm going to do it because if they don't publicly declare it, it gives them room to back out and not do it. 100%. And, and I think you, you hit on the, you hit something very important there that I, that I think people can easily have missed or gloss over. At the beginning of that declaration, guys, it's okay to be different than you are in the middle or end or at the end or the stages of it. When Ashley first started, she, her thing was, Jay, I don't want to let you down. I don't want to let the people that I've talked to down. And that's okay at first, right? And it's because of her evolution and her growth that now that's grown into well, okay, I, I know I can't let Jay down. I mean, but, and I even told you that, like, you can't let me down. Like, I'm, this is about you. But it was okay that she had that as her, like, the thing she was hanging on to. But the key thing you guys need to hear is that now that she's kept her word, she's grown into now not wanting to let herself down, which is the most important piece of the puzzle, because we've all broken so many promises to ourselves in the past, that that's why we continue to let ourselves down. And that's also why telling your two best friends won't work. 
because you jokers have got such a close bond. You've you've broken so many promises together and, and by yourselves and whatever, and you love each other anyway, you're never going to be like, Ashley, you said that last time and you didn't do what you said you were going to do. Mm -hmm. You're going to be like, girl, don't worry about it. Let's get it, you know. Yeah. So there's a new day. Yeah, yeah. Those people aren't, they're too close, right? You need yep. somebody, because I'll tell Ashley, like, listen, I'm never going to be disappointed in you, but we're going to work. If you do F it up, we're just going to fix it, right? Your friends aren't going to tell you that. They're not going to be honest with you. So I love the fact that you've grown from there to where you are now of, of you being the most important person in that equation, because that's when the real magic and the growth and the evolution and everything happens. Let's go back to what we said earlier about consistency and chaos, because I mean, your life is, I mean, it's pretty chaotic, you know, for lack of a better term. And then you've added, you add, you like to add elements, right? Like you like to <laughs> You go to Vegas, you go to Colorado, you do all these things. So you'll add a little bit of sauce on top of your own chaos. How, what are the, what are the key strategies that you have found for yourself that work to keep you consistent during those chaotic times? Just a couple. Um, I double down on the habits that I, that not necessarily mean the most to me, but because I'm always doing the habits that I've created, the journaling, the, <clears throat> the meditation, the, you know, all that stuff. But I double down, like, I had a really hard morning this morning because it was like my third day sleeping like two to three hours a night. And so I just got out my journal and I wrote like a massive gratitude list. And it's amazing how that like can turn my brain around. And then um, you kind of touched on this, but like when I'm in deep, deep chaos and you know, all the flags are waving, like you and I had, I think our last training call, we didn't even talk about weight loss at all, but you know, just having that person or people or whoever in your life, you can just like be very transparent and dump with that's mm -hmm. been a good tool. In fact, I think I did that to you this week too, yeah. via messenger. Yeah, um, right. So I would say doubling down on habits and also like having someone that you can just transparently dump. Cause sometimes like our training call, I don't think you gave me any advice. I think you just listened. No. Um, and I think that that's kind of powerful because you get it all out of your brain and your heart. And then you're like, all right, yeah. moving on, you know? So th those are things that have been really helpful for me in a chaotic life. Yeah, and that was a beautiful thing you just said. I think sometimes guys, you have to understand that like, there's no advice that needs to be given. Like nine, not 50, at least 50% 50 of the time, you already have all your answers. You just need someone to talk to these things about that's non-judgmental, non-involved. you know involved. And if I feel like there's something that I, you know, want to give you, then I'll give it to you. It's like the other day, you, we chatted via messenger and I gave you some, I mean, some aggressive advice. I would say I wasn't, so you know, good. I, I didn't, you know, it was, I'm like, listen, you, you are not going to want to hear this, but this is exactly what you need to hear. So there's and times it's the and places. the best thing I had heard in a long time, Jay. Yeah. Like it's the best thing I'd heard in a long time. Cause like you said, it took all the pieces that were already in my brain, but like rearranged them and showed me a different perspective and. And that's huge. And that's also like why the power of an accountability partner too, yeah. you know, that's, I guess, another thing too. It's been a weird, it's been a weird like couple weeks because my two accountability partners have both had like big personal life crisis crises. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of made me realize how important they are to me, you know, as yeah. far as being able to vent, being able to like get a new perspective, being able just to have that support piece. But that's another thing too, when things are really hard, just being really honest and transparent with someone that can be like, that is all really big, but you also need to keep stepping on, you know, keep moving forward. So I love it. Yeah. I'm proud of you, man. I, I feel like you are right where you're supposed to be. Um, I could, I mean, the whole 60 pounds thing, I don't give a shit. Like that's, that's fun. <laughs> I don't and either, Jay. And it that's was what's cool, crazy. Yeah. It was a cool, like 60 and six. I mean, it could have been <laughs> 50 and five, we could have four, you know, we could have done any of that. Yeah. It's, it's, it's the, the progress of the journey and where you are today versus where you were you know, even a few, even last month and the month before last, that is, that has me excited because like you hit the nail on the head earlier, there is no finish line. Like next month, we're going to do our last 60 and six podcast, but I'm going to say like, listen, let's do these monthly or every other month or whatever, because oh people are going to want to know, listen, I'm sorry. But I'm not signing up for this. If, well, you don't have to, if I send you a link, you just click it. You don't have to sign up for anything. <laughs> Like that's the, oh. cool, that's the cool thing about running the show, but I am proud of, <laughs> of, of where you are and what you've done and, and all of those, you know, types of things. So I want you to, to take that time to like, make sure you're celebrate. And I know you're, you're good at this though too. celebrate your success and where you are. And then yeah. like get that vision of, of where you want to go beyond just this six months and all those things. And I think you've got that. And 
I think you have made an you've made an impact on so many people that you don't even have an idea about because the the listeners of the show some of them will never reach out to you but they're they're following along and they're doing all the little things and they're they're you know they're encouraging you without ever encouraging you so just keep this pace and keep this energy and I think you've got everything you need to do. Yeah, I plan on it. It's you hit on the numbers and when we first if someone just listened to all our podcasts one through six or five or whatever they would hear me be so obsessed with the numbers. Like mm-hmm. it was just hilarious. I literally don't care. Uh-huh. And I mean, Monday, if I get on the scale and I lost a pound, that's great. You but know, that's, and if I, that's why yeah, we're doing so pumped. Yeah, That's why we're doing this. That's why I want you guys to hear. I, if you haven't listened to these, go back and listen to all the ones we've done before, because you will hear Ashley talk about the number and I'm pissed and I want to lose this 0.76 percentage <laughs> of a pound to get this number. I'm like, Oh my God. Yeah. Like, this, this guy shows you how the numbers are in the scale is inconsequential if you're living the life and the lifestyle that is making you happy and filled with awesomeness and abundance and all those things. That's yeah. the key. That is yeah. the piece. And people are shackled to the scale. Yeah. They're shackled to the next diet. And it's not about the scale and it's not about the diet. It's about fixing your heart and your head. And once yeah. you do that, the weight loss just happens. And I heard someone in our group say that and I was like, that's just a pile of crap. You know, I really, I was like, that sounds cute. And now I'm like, yeah, I totally believe that. And I want to like help people. Like I see people in this like habitual, you know, up down cycle that I was in for so much of my adulthood and I want to help them. And I, I do, I meet with people and I tell them all about what I'm doing, but I realize like people have to want to do the work. Totally. And like, for me, when, and it's more work than just, you know, when you're on a diet, just counting this number, doing that, you know, that feels like its own sort of work. But when you're doing the work of peeling back the layers and like getting really vulnerable with yourself and exposing your areas where you don't necessarily want to like work on that is like another level, but like people have to want to do it. And I have to accept that people aren't, some people just aren't ready to do it. And I, I was ready um, yeah. at that time. So welcome to my world. I mean, I'm consider- <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I think, can't even. I, think I, I feel even. on a daily basis. I'm like, I want to help you. <laughs> Lori's <laughs> like, you don't even know that person. We're at the grocery I- store. I'm like, just give me a minute. But no, it's, I just, I just want to help everybody. So I get what you're saying. But yeah, people have to want to, to make that shift and to make that transition and, and to do all those things. What are you, what do you got planned for the rest of the day? Rest of the day. I've got a client Zoom meeting here pretty mm-hmm. soon. But we have our pool open and it's beautiful. And I want to go get some like palm plants and make it cute. Cause we're in that stage where we're like living at the pool here pretty soon. So I, love it. I think that's the plan. Did you ride your Peloton today? No, but I trained with Cody and it was good. Oh, cool. Awesome. I didn't, I didn't whine today, which I'm really proud of. But it's hard you, to, we it's love hard it to train. when you whine. We love it. Train. No, we love it when you whine. It's our favorite. Yeah, right. He hates it. But I mean, I slept for like two and a half hours. I'm like, this could be a dumpster fire. But yeah. I just went in there. I did the work and I actually felt really good when I left. So awesome. I think that's a win. Well, I'm proud of you. You're winning all around. Let's keep doing this. Next month will be number our six. We're done. Check in. We're not done. Forever. So forever. Done. No, we're not. <laughs> Joker. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the show. Um, make sure you're following Ashley in her journey. Um, Wellness Lab launch pads, the easiest place to do that. Just go to thriveforeverfit.com, giant page on the homepage that says click to join. Um, you can get easy free updates over there. Um, what's your um, what's your Peloton name? If anybody wants to ride Ooh, with you or support you. It's my college nickname. So it's smash, like Ash with an S, smash underscore effect, E-F-F-E-C-T. Smash underscore effect. And I'll high five you. I probably oh. won't video you, but I'll I'm a high fiver, right, Jay? I'm like, you are, she's a good high fiver. <laughs> she was in Vegas, and I'm like, who is this joker high fiving me? I'm trying to get a ride in, and I look up, and it's Ashley. So, if you guys, so my Peloton name changes, I change it all the time. Um, my new name is The Show Pony. So, if you oh, like, I didn't follow, notice. Yeah, so, okay. I like, <laughs> so That's if you want to follow me on Peloton, it's The Show Pony. Um, but here's the problem if I see you on there, I'm going to dominate you. I am going it's to. It's true. I am going. Cause here's the problem. Sometimes I get on the bike when yeah. I just, I have a, I'm in between meetings and I'll do emails and I'm really not even list. I'm just, you know, the music's on, but I'm not paying attention. But when I see somebody's on there, I'm like, got to go to work and it's, I will dominate you. It's actually annoying, but I've, I've accepted that I've surrounded myself with really badass people because um, there's like an ex-pro athlete that we always talk Peloton and he'll be like, yeah, I got 
678 on that one. I'm like, what in the what? You know, but it it's encouraging to me. But here's what I here's a funny quick story. So I beat Jay in a ride because you can see like the history and I do a lot of country rides. He does every country ride. And I got so excited <laughs> that I screenshot it and I sent it to Jay. And this is my encouraging coach. Oh, I was probably just doing emails on that ride. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I want to be oh. honest with you guys. Like if, if you beat me in a ride, I'm probably don't even know you're there. <laughs> because if I know you're there, I'm going to put my phone down and I'm going to try to dominate you. So I need to get you, I need to get you on a ride with my friend that is a monster and let you guys just like die together. All right. Let's do it. Let's do it. It's going to be fun. Guys, we love you. Thanks for listening. Ashley, love you. Thank you for doing this. Yes. You're an unbelievable human. Let's just keep crushing the game. All right, guys, we'll see you. We'll see you next week. Bye.